These are natural testosterone boosters that have gone viral since Dr. Andrew Huberman shared their benefits with the world. And if they work, increased testosterone can help build bigger muscles, which is what I want, improve our mood, and also support better energy levels. So for the next 30 days, I'm gonna be putting these supplements to the test, and I'm gonna be getting blood work before and after to see if this stuff actually works. So I'll be taking 400 milligrams of Tonkat Ali and 600 milligrams of Fidoja Agrestis, both from Momenta Supplements. Use code Mike for 15% off. But you might be thinking, why should you even give a shit about boosting your testosterone levels? A recent study from 2020 from Lakeshwar and colleagues, consisting of young US men between the age of 15 to 39, found that as of 2016, 20.5% of men had low testosterone, meaning less than 300 nanograms per deciliter. What's wild is that number has increased by 370.3% in just 16 years. And they also found that average testosterone levels had also decreased by 25.5%. What's even worse is these are large sample sizes. I've personally experienced the low T levels in 2020. I was making some really stupid health decisions, applying a bunch of health fads to my life and just chronically working. Basically just screwed up all my hormones, my libido out the window, energy levels, terrible as well. I started growing gynecomastia, which for you that don't know, basically it's man boobs. Really messed up with my mental health, to be honest, and my body image. I was very self-conscious about it for a while. Testosterone levels are so indicative of basically overall health for men. You don't wanna mess around with that stuff. But my big question when reading this paper was, why are we seeing such a large decline over a short period of time, just 16 years? According to their paper, they found two significant correlations. The first one was BMI. They basically found that the higher your body mass index would go, the lower testosterone levels you would experience. So the before and after for BMI was quite different. We had three categories, which is normal, overweight, and obese. Normal decreased by 21.7%, overweight increased by 8.4%, and obese increased by 46.6%. The second main correlation that they found was activity levels. And there was also three sections. They had vigorous, moderate, and less than moderate. In the vigorous category, they found a 41.2% decrease. In the moderate category, a 34.4% increase. And then in the less than moderate category, a 67.2% increase. So people were appear to be eating more and moving less. So basically gaining weight, and generally what we know is when the body gains weight, it doesn't tend to do what it's supposed to do properly. So now we understand, okay, there is a problem. Testosterone levels unfortunately are decreasing. So how can these pills help? Let's dive into the science of this stuff. We're gonna start off with Tonkat Ali, otherwise known as Yurikoma Longifolio Jack. Definitely targeted towards men. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, this southeastern Asian flowering plant has been used in folk medicine for centuries. It's been claimed to aid with postpartum recovery, act as an aphrodisiac, and was even claimed to combat malaria. A recent 2022 study from Lysagang and colleagues found that after reviewing five different studies that consisted of 232 different participants, they found that Tonkat Ali could positively affect testosterone levels. For instance, one study found that 200 milligrams per day for six months increased total testosterone levels from 278 to 400 nanograms per deciliter. However, results varied because there were some studies that basically people took the supplementation and the placebo and there was no difference at all. Makes sense because again, people's bodies are different and oftentimes what we see in research papers like this is the average of all the different participants. So there can be people on each of the extremes that didn't experience anything or actually had negative effects. Of course, Tonkat doesn't come without its risks. There has been instances of heavy metal poisoning and also there's not too much safety and long-term research done on Tonkat, like for example, something like creatine. So take it with a grain of salt. Then we have Fidoja agrestis. This herb native to Nigeria has been traditionally used as an aphrodisiac and to treat erectile dysfunction. All the men are like, yes, finally, something that helps. I'm joking, I'm joking. And interestingly, research in rodas has found that Fidoja is able to increase testosterone levels. A 2005 research study from Yabuku and colleagues found a noticeable increase in albino rats. The research revealed that administering various doses of Fidoja agrestis led to significant increases in serum testosterone levels. And what's really interesting is they noticed that this dosage resulted in a two, 
three and six fold percent increase in testosterone levels respectively. But of course, again, just like Tonkat, Fagoja is not all sunshine and rainbows. There's problems with this bad boy as well. According to examine.com, they mentioned that it could be toxic to the cells and that there's just not enough research done on it at the moment, especially for prolonged use. So you really wanna use your discretion here. And according to Andrew Huberman, you wanted to get two biomarkers tested, which was GGT and ALP to make sure that you're not experiencing any toxicity from these supplements. This really just underscores the importance of doing regular blood work, especially when you're taking supplements like this. You might be thinking, oh my God, Fidoja is the best thing in the world. But keep in mind, <laughs> the research was done on rodents, not on humans, and, and we're not the same. But here's the thing with these supplements, SARMs, steroids, we live in a day and age now where everyone, instead of practicing the fundamentals. We just want a quick fix. We don't actually want to put in the work, which can have substantially longer and more significant effects in our lives. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against supplementation. I think it can be extremely valuable, but I think it should be supplementing foundational things that you're already doing. So I want you to understand three free tips that you can apply to your life lifestyle wise that will help improve your testosterone levels as well that don't necessarily require you to take these things. The first one is really optimizing your sleep. I hammer this helm all the time. <laughs> like literally my last two videos were just about sleep, but it's so important. Like it's not just about the quantity, but also the quality that you're giving yourself. So ideally what I always like to do, I like to allocate nine hours in bed, that's that's something that works for me. I would really experiment with yourself. An easy way to figure that out is like, give yourself nine hours to sleep and see how many your body actually takes. Take seven and a half, great, that's what you need. And really trying to improve the quality of those hours of sleep. So making sure it's a cool, it's a quiet, and it's a really dark space. And sleep consistency matters as well. So waking up at the same time every single day Going to bed at the same time every day is a bit overrated according to Dr. Chris Winter, which was in our last episode, because if you wake up consistently, you will inevitably start going to bed on time. The second one is really focusing on being active. I understand everyone's busy, so am I, but I think you can approach it from a minimalistic perspective. And I'm five months into a bulk because I want to put on like 10 to 15 pounds of muscle, ideally. I personally aim for two training sessions, an upper and lower, and in an ideal scenario, I'm getting mobility as well, and in an even more ideal scenario, I'm getting one zone two training of cardio. But oftentimes what happened is my week is super busy and I just do an upper and lower day on Saturday, Sunday, and that's what we do. But again, <laughs> that allows me to get the consistency. But look, I get this can be hard. So I really ask yourself, do you wanna gain muscle and lose fat and ideally have more energy throughout the day? But even though you want it and probably know what to do, you can't consistently do steps towards your goal. If this sounds like you, I'm starting a one-on-one -on -one coaching program to help people get fit in a minimalistic fashion. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, please just click the link in the description. There's gonna be a form to fill out so we can see if this is a fit for you. And the third thing is to really eat a balanced diet. So often I see people cutting out a whole macronutrient. Oftentimes it's fat we kind of went through the whole low fat food craze. But at the end of the day, a lot of your hormones are going to be built of these healthy fats. So if your fat levels are super, super low, it's a problem. Like I had one client I was working with that was so hesitant to increase his fat intake. He was basically just only eating carbs and protein and it can become problematic. And it's not just in the fat category, but opting for, again, lean proteins, a variety of fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds. And at the same time, this is gonna help your gut health as well and, and probably make eating more enjoyable because I know as well, it oftentimes can be a chore, but it doesn't have to be. Even though these three categories of strategies can seem really boring and oftentimes people want to run away from them, right? Like they wanna use supplements. They are gonna be so massively beneficial for you if you actually just stick to them. Don't be perfect. Apply the 80-20 perspective there as well. How can 80% of the times you be good and 20% of the times with your diet, with your sleep, with your fitness, do whatever the hell you want. Don't put yourself in a prison in a box. That's what I did for such a long time. At the end of the day, if you're doing those fundamentals 80% of the time consistently, that's what's gonna get you those results. But let's look at my blood work after using these supplements. I was honestly very surprised. So personal experience wise, the things that I really noticed about taking these things for 30 days, my libido definitely increased, my strength in the gym improved as well. And I 
did have generally more energy, but Huberman talks about like when he would take these supplements, he would immediately for the next few hours get like a jolt of energy. I didn't personally experience that, but to each their own. So my total testosterone increased by 92 nanograms per deciliter. So that's from 762 to 854, which is a 12.1% increase. And my free testosterone, which is going to be the testosterone that's actually available for use within the body. And I noticed an increase of 30 PG per ml, which is a 21.4% increase. So here's likely why these supplements did what they did throughout my body. According to examine.com, Tonkadali inhibits the enzyme aromatase, which converts testosterone into estrogen, which could be the reason my estradiol decreased by 20.4%. Plus, Tonkadali has also been associated with increases of luteinizing hormone in the body. If luteinizing hormone increase, your testes will then increase testosterone as well, which again probably shows why I had an increase of 10.7% of LH. But then I'm really happy that I did get both of the biomarkers that Huberman recommended to check to make sure I wasn't experiencing any toxicity, which were GGT and ALP. For GGT, it did increase by 13.3%, and for ALP, it decreased by 10.7%. Both are still in the normal range, but most importantly, the question is, am I going to continue taking these supplements? No. Look, personally, again, I'm still 25. I still have a bit more time for me to be in peak testosterone levels. At 762, I'm okay with that. And over time, I now know that these work for me, so I can experiment with maybe when I'm 35 or I'm 45 and I'm experiencing lower T and I do want more energy to keep my muscle mass. And maybe I'll explore with HRT then, but for the time being, I'm okay with where I'm at. Anyways, if you do want to try these supplements, Momentous Supplements is going to be the place to do that. Everything is science and evidence-based backed. I reached out to them and they hooked me up with 15% off, so you can use code Mike to get that discount. But if you'd rather just stick to lifestyle factors to improve your testosterone levels, I would highly recommend checking out this video here where we talk with Dr. Chris Winter and a bunch of other experts to help improve your sleep. Don't forget to click subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next one.